Hello, Startup Vision, uh, François Chopard, CEO and founder of Starburst. Hello, François. Thank you so much for being with us here on Startup Vision TV. So you are the founder of Starburst, an aerospace and defense global accelerator. So this is an unusual and so specialized activity. It's a very small and close world, and yet you deal with a lot of different countries. Can you explain um, the story and the why of Starburst? Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm an engineer by training. I worked for Airbus a long time ago. Um, I, I did my military service with the US Air Force and I've always been a, you know, an international player. Um, I worked in the aerospace industry for 20 years, um, focused on innovations. And then about seven years ago, SpaceX was uh, ramping up. And I thought there was a need on, on both sides for startups on, on one side and large corporations on the other side to, to meet at some point and to work on you know, disrupting um, the aerospace industry. So you deal with uh, very specific fields like drones, uh, flying cargo, supersonic uh, planes, satellites, uh, uh, space and defense. How do you operate as an accelerator? So you're right, it's, it's, it's very wide, but at the same time, it's a you know, passionate um, new field and new technology, you know, thinking that soon we're going to be able to use these flying cars to, go, to move from one part of the city to another, uh, thinking that the Concorde will be available soon again, and we're going to be able to drive faster from you know, Paris to New York, for example. Um, and so our team is focused, is, is um, set up globally, and we look for uh, you know, emerging startups around the globe. Um, we, we identify approximately 2,000 new ones every year, and we try to pick the best, uh, the, the one that are going to be um, the winners, and we, we connect them with large corporations, government agencies. We worked a lot, a lot with NASA and the uh, US Air Force. Uh, in the US, we, lo we work a lot with the French DGA, uh, the German BDLI, the Israeli forces, and et cetera, et cetera. And so we, we try to help these startups to um, you know, grow their business, be successful, and then raise more money. And can we speak uh, specifically about Momentus and Red Six to uh, the startups you're accelerating? Yeah, so Momentus is a good example. It's a uh, focus on space, and it's um, it's a third stage of a, of a spacecraft that uh, you, know, you, you put on, on that spacecraft, your, your tiny satellites, and um, it's like a delivery in space. And so it's gonna put your satellites precisely at the right orbit and the, the right locations. Um, they raised so far 50 million. They, they are partnering with, with SpaceX, um, and they've been very successful so far. And so it's the idea that um, you know, space uh, very soon will be like your, you know, new neighborhoods. Uh, people will be living in space, whether it's in low Earth orbit or, or the moons. Mars is a bit further, but um, um, yeah, so you, you need to find deliveries company for that, that new um, area. And then Red Six, it's a little bit different. It's a bit, a little bit more down to earth. It's an augmented reality tool to train uh, fighter pilots. Um, in the Air Force and in other forces, and they develop some pretty cool technology. So in fact, what you're saying is that it's, uh, it's like in the startup world, in fact, uh, those startups are, represent the R&D for big companies. It's, uh, it's a way for them to acquire necessary uh, things they need to develop. And, 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 and particularly now, we see that, you know, with that, that new type of crisis, um, we are seeing a lot of corporations cutting their R&D budgets um, and soon relying more on the external uh, innovation, ex external disruptive technologies, um, which are, you know, the, the, the startup world. So, yes, a little bit like in the pharmaceutical um, area about 20 years ago, um, now R&D is, is more and more done outside the large corporations. And then later on, either these startups are super, super successful and go to, all the way to the IPO, probably like you know, SpaceX is going to do, or they get acquired at some point in, the, in their life by some of the big names. Very interesting. And 
very important also, you are organizing a startup competition. Can you tell us more about that? So, yes, we, we organize, you know, startup competitions along the year, um, um, either for ourselves or for, you know, other organizations. We have one coming up in November um, that is for the, uh, the U.S. Air Force and Space Force, as well as the U.K. MOD, and we are looking at space startups. But usually these competitions are, are a good way for us to um, um, bring on board new startups into our accelerator program and, and later on in, invest in them. So I would like to end this exchange with geopolitical considerations. We now see a fierce competition between countries um, in the space race. Uh, every big nation is targeting Mars or the satellite domination. What is your analysis on this? And do you think we could have a cooperation like we had in the recent past? So, um... Yeah, we're in, in the phase like almost like 60 or 70 years ago during the Cold War between you know US and Russia. Um, today it's more between the US and China, and the, the, the competition is really fierce because China has a huge um, financial resources, um, a, a large um, manpower, and so um, I, I don't see any any cooperation possible between these two countries. But what we are seeing is the, the U.S. trying to bring more allied country into the, into the game. And that's what we are running for them. The, it's called the Allied Defense Accelerator, where we are trying to bring outside technology from the U.S., bring them in, or at least push them to cooperate with the U.S. in order to not lose the, the technological race between the U.S. and China. Um, and yes, yeah, yeah, space is the new frontier. Um, it's... Um, it's key because from space, that's where you, you, know, you have the GPS, that's where you have most of your communications, um, that's where you do Earth observations and when you can monitor other countries. So space has become a key asset and, and the US don't want to lose their um, supremacy that has, been, that has been currently challenged by the Chinese. Okay, very nice. It's great. Uh, this exchange is so interesting. Thank you so much, Francois, for sharing all this with us on Startup Vision TV. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Startup Vision.